What you pursue in your life, uh, what you seek after, what you long for, what you desire, what you really commit your energy and effort and time to it, it matters. It matters most importantly to God. And we know that God is in control. God is over all things, but he holds us responsible for our actions, for our priorities. And so uh, I, I want to challenge you just for a few moments this afternoon to, to think through your pursuit in your life, your your commitments, your priorities. And reading through Amos recently in my daily devotions, uh, you know, the, the book of Amos in the Old Testament is about God's judgment, God's judgment on Israel, God's judgment on Israel's neighbors. And we see that God judges sin. God judges not just the results of our sin or, the, or he, his judgment is the result of our sin, but God judges not just our actions, but even our our, our efforts, our desires, our, our passions, our commitments. God judges that. And we and we need to be aware of that. And we need to understand that there are consequences when we don't pursue right things with our daily lives. And so a great example is in in, in chapter five, when he is, he is pleading with the people of Israel to consider what they're doing. He's pleading with them and he says, seek good and not evil. So there's just a simple black and white statement that's so important and it's so simple and yet so difficult sometimes. Seek good and not evil so that you may live. So that's verse 14. Now think about that for a second because that, that applies to them practically and physically and in the moment for them right then because God was saying if you if you seek evil, even your physical lives will be in jeopardy because I'll judge you. I'll send your enemies against you. So seek good and not evil so that you may live. And the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you as you have claimed. Now think about that for a second because there's also spiritual implications there that, are, that go far beyond this life. If you seek good and not evil, then God will be with you as you would claim. And we, we might say, well, why is God allowing this to happen in my life? Why am I going through this? Why am I not, you know, experiencing all the good things I want to experience? Well, are you seeking good and not evil? Are you seeking, in other words, what he's saying there, are you seeking him? Are you seeking the Lord or are you seeking evil? And we can't pursue the ways of the world, pursue all the things that the world would have us to want and then expect good things from God. Now, this isn't a blanket promise that if we seek good and not evil, that we won't have difficulty, that we won't have pain, that we won't have suffering. I had a surgery yesterday. It was a minor surgery, thankfully, for a hernia. But, uh, you know, I don't know why I got the hernia. It's probably because I'm a Vikings fan and I have this un unnecessary restraint every time a Vikings uh, kicker kicks the ball and I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm straining uh, awkwardly and then, you know, got a hernia from that. So maybe that was a result of me seeking evil. I don't know. But the reality is we're not promised physical health. We're not promised physical longevity, but we, we are promised. And this is what we need to realize. And sorry, let me mute this phone real quick. What we are promised that we need to realize is that we are promised spiritual health. We're promised spiritual longevity, spiritual prosperity when we seek the Lord, because that's when we, that's when he is with us. And he doesn't promise to be with us when we seek evil. And so in verse 15, it goes on to say, hate evil and love good establish justice in the gate, perhaps the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. And so there's this, this understanding here that we have to recognize that there is a clear distinction between seeking the Lord and not seeking the Lord. And there's no fine line in between, or there's no, uh, there's no you know, fence in between that we can walk along and say, well, I'll, I'm glad to seek the Lord in these areas, but not in these areas. No, you're either seeking the Lord and seeking good, or you're seeking evil and doing evil. Uh, there's no in between. And so we have to recognize that importance for our lives and not just want God to be a genie who does all the things that we want, but then we can live how we want when we're not seeking him. And because the reality is we seek him with all of, of our lives or we don't seek him at all. So let's seek the Lord. Let's seek good, not evil. Let's hate evil and let's love good. Seek the Lord and then he will be with you as you claim, as he promised, but only if you're walking with him, let's not declare his promises without seeking after him.